This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Stephen Kravitz, who just a moment ago, before we went on, was changing the month on his calendar, which I suppose when we run this one, it'll be correct because you're now t- changing it to July. That's correct. But when we're doing this, it's still June. So why are you changing it today? So you won't. Well, because it's the end of June. Today is the end of June. Yeah, but you don't have to change to July. Well, why not? And do you have one of those those calendars you like get from the gas station or whatever? Right, you hang up on the wall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have one of those. Does it have uh, each month have a different picture on it? Yeah, each month has a different car. A different this car. month it has the '63 Ford Thunderbird. Oh, really? And so where did yeah. where, where did you get this from a car dealership or something? Oh no, no, I got it uh, at CVS, I believe. Was it free? No. They charged you for it. Oh, yeah. Have you ever heard of a computer? A what? A computer. Sure. Yeah. Uh, 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 all my appointments, including this one here, I have on my computer. I, I don't have one of those calendars hanging up. Oh, I like to write write it in the little box, you know, the day box. Oh, really? Yeah, I like to do that. Well, you, you need to now. You're a very busy guy. Oh, yeah, now that I'm working. Yeah, you're working. Tell them where you're working. I'm working at Lowe's. Tell them what you're doing. I'm a cashier. Do you ever want to throw something at somebody? Not yet. Not I've yet. been very lucky. Not yet. Yeah, so far, everybody's been very nice. Well, you you have a nice, pleasing personality. Right. Right. Uh, uh, and I tell them I'm new, and they're very they're very uh, they're very uh, giving when you tell them that you're new. You know what I mean? They're very tolerant. Of yeah. your, of your, you, you know that you're not going as quick as they'd like you to do. So, so you, really, you if, saying that you're new uh, probably gets lets you get away with a lot, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the same thing as the COVID excuse. Right. Well, you know the reason why uh, our uh, service online isn't as good as it usually is is because of COVID. Yeah, but didn't you hear that it's pretty much it's not over. But it, everybody's back to work again, right? You know, right, so, right, right. So what's the what's your excuse now for your lousy service? Although some people still wear masks, they do. Well, do you wear masks in, in no. all those? No, no. Why, why not? Well, there's a big shield between me and the customers. Okay, all right. Okay, that, that, that that's good. Do, are they wearing masks? Some of them. Really good. Good. Some people, of them are, yeah. People, people should still wear masks. They should still take precautions because I'm I'm uh, I'm an example of that. You can get it. Right. Guess where I got it? How'd you get it? I didn't get it. Marjorie, my wife, got it. Where do you think she got it? Where'd she get it? Remember the story I told you of me going to the hospital for an emergency at the emergency right. room? Which right. probably will come to about twenty thousand um, dollars, but I went to the emergency room. Uh, she was waiting in the waiting room, and I think that's where we got. She got it. She had her mask on, all of that, but she still got it because when she came down with some kind of symptoms, she came down with about two days earlier than me. Right. So I assume she got it there at the hospital, Mount Sinai. Well, Lake. The hospital, you always go out, you leave with something you didn't come in with. Oh, yeah, MRSA. You can get MRSA infections, things like that, you know. But, I mean, you, just let me tell you that Mount Sinai in New York City is a Petri dish of disease, okay? Oh, of course. All hospitals are, Alex. Yeah. That's why they keep them cold. And so, they keep them cold so germs don't, don't reproduce. Well, we were like, we were like really kind of 
snotty in saying, well, we haven't gotten COVID yet. Right. You know, and and uh, we, we had done everything possible in the beginning. If we got a package, we disinfected it with disinfectant and let it sit out in our foyer for two, three days before we'd open it. Oh, really? You know, oh, yeah. I mean, we were... We were, we were washing our hands every five minutes. We were, you know, wearing a mask wherever we went. Uh, See, I've, I've, done, I've done none of that stuff. None of it. I did the Absolutely rubber, none of it. We were doing the rubber gloves. When we no, go I out. never did that. I put on the rubber gloves. I look I look like a surgeon going out for a walk with the mask yeah, on. Yeah, no kidding, right. Rubber gloves. So anyway, so we, and we managed to avoid it for two and a half years, okay? And I, suddenly I'm rushed to the hospital. Next thing you know, we got COVID. You know, so. That's ridiculous. And well, the, now you're double boosted, aren't you? I'm t double, I'm double, uh, yeah, I'm double boosted. Two shots right. and then double boosted. Still got it, not heavy, wasn't heavy. But then they gave us this stuff. It's called a Paxlovid, which is a five day thing of of this, these two pills that we take twice, uh, once a day. Was it once a day? Yeah, once a day. And um, we took it, and it, it supposedly, if you've even not been vaccinated and you come down with COVID, it will knock it out. Right, that's what I heard. Yeah. Uh, so we took it, yeah, and we and my doctor, I said to him, he said, well, do you feel you need it? And I said, look, I'm 80, 82 years old, Marjorie is 78, uh, I think we do. He says, that's a good enough excuse. Right. So he gave us a, a so we took it. And it, it did knock it out. I mean, we, when we went and tested ourselves a week later, we were good to go. But the after effects of either that pill or just the COVID in general has been devastating. I mean, today I woke up again, I was lightheaded all day. Oh really? You know, and the, a couple of days ago, I was just so weak. I could, I barely couldn't get out of bed. And we didn't have the disease any longer. So, right. So these are right. the after effects of like the Paxlovid and of, of, uh, of uh, COVID, and whatever. So I, it, 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 but it, I like the name of the drug because I said, I've said this before, oh boy, there, there's my mouse, I'm sorry. It's in the, it was in the picture, folks. Um, uh, uh, that I uh, uh, really feel that Paxlovid is another one of those drugs that was invented by Jerry Lewis. <laughs> Paxlovid. 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 Lady. Riboflavin. Flavin Flavin. No, but I always have all these, these drugs occasionally come along and I go, yeah, that's a Jerry Lewis drug, all right. Paxlovin. So, yeah, that's a Jerry Lewis drug. But, um, so anyway. Is he still alive? No, he's dead. He's been dead for a while. Uh, That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw an interview with uh, Woody Allen uh, that uh, Alec Baldwin did with him just a few days ago. You don't see an interview with him very often, and and, and to his credit, uh, uh, Alec Baldwin did a great job of it, asking him questions about. It, it, he didn't ask him about the whole Mia Farrow thing or anything like that. We asked him about the process of creating stuff and so on and so forth. Right. And he asked him what comedians influenced him. And he said, well, W.C. Fields, the Marx Brothers. And I think the question was, if you could have anybody from the history of comedy to put in your films, who would it be? Right. And he said, W.C. Fields. He said, the Marx Brothers. I went through a whole bunch of them. He finally mentioned the one I knew he, would, he had to mention because he really imitates him, Woody Allen. Stole his timing from him, it's Bob Hope. Oh, is that right? Well, if you go watch Bob Hope, his stuff is very similar to the way that Woody Allen acts in his movies, you know? That, mm. oh, you know, <laughs> you know. Um, right. Uh, and and uh, he mentioned Bob Hope. And then he said, you know, I really would have liked to work with is Jerry Lewis. Really? And he said, because I don't think he ever lived up to his potential. He said he shouldn't have been doing all those wacky comedies. He said he could do a straight part very nicely. 
He would have, oh, yeah. He would have fit like hand and gloved into one of my films. You know. Hmm. But he said, I never got to work with him. So. Yeah. But um, um, I, I always, I never had the great appreciation for Jerry Lewis that the French do. Now, you lived in France for a while. Why do the French love, you know? It's a Jerry mystery, Lewis? Alex. It's one of those big mysteries. Because I, I, I he, he, and then he mentioned Bob Hope. He says, if you want to watch the best Bob Hope movie ever, and the reason why I love him, it's a film called Monsieur Bouquet, which I know is out there, but I've never watched it. And he says, right. watch it. He said, Hope is Ambrosia, just perfect in this film. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So, so you know, the, the uh, I didn't think he would, I knew he'd come up with Bob Hope. You could see his Bob Hope's influence in, in his character, uh, right? But uh, I didn't know that he would come up with Jerry Lewis. I knew he would no. come up with W. C. Fields. I'm sure he loved W. C. Fields and the Marx Brothers. Who didn't? You know? Right. Who didn't? Although I didn't like W. C. Fields as much as other people did, but the Marx Brothers. Oh man, was I a fan? Yeah, me too. You know, uh, and people are watching this now. Kids are watching this right now, going. Who? <laughs> Who? Yeah. What? The what Mar are you talking about? The Marx was that the Karl Marx, the guy who was in Russia, that guy? Right, 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 right. You know, I mean, and people go say to me, "Oh, come on, there aren't people that go who when it comes to the Mar yes, there are. Sure, there are. You, you know, the, the Marx brothers were making movies almost a hundred years ago, fit ninety years ago. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, all things get forgotten after a while. Right. The Marx Brothers movies still hold up, though. Oh, they still hold up. I could sit down and watch a Marx Brothers film and still laugh at it, even though I know what's coming. Right. Me too. You know, I mean, it, they're that good. But do you think young people are watching Marx Brothers films? No. No, of course not. You know. Of course not. They want to see, you know, they want to see a comedy with some mediocre black comic. Right. You know. Uh, and I'm not, Although I want to go see the new Minion movie. Really? Yes. Why? I think they're funny. I like the Minions. <laughs> they make me laugh. What can I tell you? Maybe I should think, maybe I should reassess the Minions. They make me laugh. They make me laugh hard. Yeah. But anyway, so, so you're working at Lowe's. Yes. Okay. And that's because, quite frankly, he needs to work. Right. And they, they, they pay okay? Yeah, okay. I mean, you, you could Not use... Not great. You but, could, uh, you know... Well, two, there are two <laughs> things. You could use the extra bucks, but it's also good to have to go to work. Right. Right. You know, it's just good as a, as a process. Although yesterday I went to work, I came home and I took a nap. I took a hard nap. I was like exhausted. Oh, I take out the garbage and I have to take a hard nap. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So, anyway, but anyway, so um, uh, you know, I mean, it's just good to have a job and go do something to work. I, I would like to have some kind of something I could go to because I haven't done. You know, I haven't been working. For eight years, basically. Yeah. Right. I've been doing. Right. I've been doing this, but I don't consider this a job. Um, but the business, also, my business isn't the same as it was. Uh, right. Do, do you know what else Woody Allen said in this interview? This What's is, that? He says my next movie is probably going to be my last film. And Baldwin said, "Why?" And you'd think he'd say, "Oh, well, the whole Mia Farrell thing. I'm sick and tired of that crap, and so on." He said. I don't enjoy making movies anymore, and I'll tell you why. He said, because when I was making movies, uh, I would make a movie, and then they put it in like 500 theaters across the country. And right. I could go into any of those theaters and see 500 people enjoying my comedy as a group. You know. He said, today, you're in the theater for two weeks, and then it's on cable. You know, it's on streaming. Right. It's on Netflix, right. Right. or it's on Amazon. Right. He said... I don't make movies for Amazon. I don't make movies even for Netflix. I make movies for theaters. And that's what gave me the thrill. And now that that's no longer there, I don't 
really feel like doing them anymore. Hmm. And I didn't stop to think about that, but he was absolutely right. And then right. Started oh, we, we haven't heard from Woody Allen in a few years. When was the last time he had a film? He had one called, uh, I, I saw it recently, but again, it was one that got released to, uh, I think it was Amazon. Uh, and it, uh, Bobby Slayton's in it. For a, oh, is that right? For a quick second, but he's in it. He flew him all the way to Italy to make this thing, and then uh, used him for like, it's like the camera goes by Bobby, and Bobby's saying something to somebody, and then it goes to somebody else. That's Bobby in the whole film. Right. But anyway, he, uh, uh, he, he, he has been making films still. Uh, he's making one, he says, in, in Paris in November. Uh, but he said, I'm just, you know, he says, I don't get the thrill out of making them anymore. I, I used to get a great thrill the day the film came out and I could go into a theater and watch people enjoying it. Right, I don't blame him. And, and Baldwin said, yeah, that's the trouble with, that's the trouble with, uh, with streaming. He said, yeah, the ear movie's on a big screen best stereo sound possible in your home, you know, if, right. you, if you set yourself up right. And he said, but the fact is, it's you and somebody else. It's not 500 other people all laughing at the same right. time. Right, all enjoying your work. Yeah, it, it's not, a, it's not a, watching a movie isn't a social event anymore when you watch it at home. No, not at all. And I, I thought that that observation uh, perhaps was a valid observation. Now I know a lot of kids are going to go, well, you're just old-fashioned. No, no. Uh, there is something about why... I'll give you a good example. Um, do you ever watch uh, Buster Keaton in Steamboat? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, what was it called? Steamboat Bill. Uh, I've watched that film dozens of times. Okay. Right, but I never seen it in a theater. And I went to a theater with a bunch of people, silent festival, with a bunch of people watching Steamboat Bill Jr. That's it. And they were laughing their heads off at stuff, at jokes I didn't hadn't even realized existed in the film before. Right, because the film was made for an audience to watch. Right. It wasn't meant for me to sit at home and watch it by myself and go, oh, that's funny, that's funny. Right, 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 right. right. Instead of laughing, you just go, that's funny. There's this one scene where he goes into a store to buy a hat, and he starts putting on hats, and he puts on one after the other, and people are laughing because they're funny hats and, you know, whatever. And then finally puts one on that is the typical Buster Keaton hat, you know, that pork pie, flat pork right, pie. Right, 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 right. And he puts it on and looks at it and goes, no, nah, and throws it off. And the, the audience went crazy. All right? I never saw that as a joke in the movie when I watched right. it at home. So, you know, movies were made to be seen as a group thing. Right. And now... And it's sort of about getting, you know, getting out of the house and going to the theater, you know, and getting your popcorn and getting your drink. Yeah. Some, there's some uh, the, making an event. People you know, used going to, to the uh, movies was an event. People used to dress up to go to the movies. Sure. They used to. You people know, they, used to dress up in Vegas. Now they show up in shorts and a t-shirt. But do you, do you know what they used to always dress up for? T ties, everything. Riding in a plane. Oh yeah. Yeah. Going to the doctors. You would dress <laughs> up, wouldn't you? To go to the doctors, yeah. sure. When you were a kid. Oh, the, I don't remember my mother ever making me dress up, but she probably did. You know. I remember getting dressed up to go to the doctors, taking a shower, taking a bath, and going to the doctors. Well, you always want to take a bath before you go to the doctors, because he's going to take your clothes off, and then you don't want to smell. Right. You know that I understand, but you know why? Do, why should you wear a suit to go see the doctor, especially when? T just taking off a normal amount of clothes is a pain in the ass. Right. And at my age, it takes forever. <laughs> you know? Uh, I, I, the other day, I was thinking about it. Gee, I'm getting dressed, and it's taking forever for me to get dressed, you know? Got to put this leg in there, and then got to put that leg in there. And you Do you have to hold on to something to put on your pants? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Do you? Sometimes. Yeah, I hold on to a doorknob. 
I get I can get in one leg by itself, but I have to get hold on to a doorknob to get the other leg. Hey, listen. Yeah, sit down and put on your socks. Yes. Do you? Oh yeah. Yeah. How about when you're this is old people stuff. We're taking old people inventory. When you're going down a flight of stairs, do you hold on to the banister? Oh, absolutely. See? That's it. When you were a kid, did you hold on to the banister? Didn't even need a banister. No, oh, you just ran up and down those stairs. Right. Uh, we oh, As you get older, and, and he's, you're, what, 67 now? 66. 66. As you get older, he's younger than I am. But, you know, he's he's grabbing onto that banister. That's oh, absolutely, banister. especially going downstairs. And you can bet in another couple of years when you put your pants on, you're gonna have to do them either sitting down or when you, you know, when you stand up, you're gonna have to hold on to something. Right, right, you right, know? right. I mean, all of a sudden, I realized that I'm doddering in certain ways. I didn't used to be doddering. Well, when you start eating dinner at four thirty, and you start going to bed at nine o'clock, then then you're getting old. Well, Marjorie has it down to five thirty. Used to be six. It's down to five thirty. Right. I'm waiting for it to become the early bird special. Right, you right. Four thirty, dinner time. And occasionally she said to me, uh, you know, I'm hungry. Let's eat early tonight. I said, Well, this is like four thirty and I go, No, there's no way we're eating at four thirty. Right. You know, I am not gonna begin dinner at four thirty. I didn't used to begin dinner till like ten o'clock at night. Yeah, but that how many years ago was that? That was when I was there a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> All right. A long time ago. But right. I'm, and you were sleeping in. Oh, yeah. Well, I sleep in now, too, because I'm up late for the show and everything like right. that. You know? But I uh, 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 I just, uh, you know, no. I, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not going to uh, be, uh, be eating at 10 o'clock at night anytime soon. No. Uh, Marjorie, I'm in bed at 10 o'clock. We go out to eat at a restaurant. The reservations are 6 o'clock. Right. Yeah. You know. She claims she wants to beat the crowd. I, I, I say, why don't we try it once for like 9 o'clock at night? Come on. She goes, but that's when I go to sleep. Right. <laughs> right. It's too late. It's too late. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to eat a big meal at 9 o'clock. Uh, I, I don't mind eating a big meal at 9 o'clock. Well, see, I don't go to bed till four, uh, 2 in the morning. Oh, is that right? Okay. So I could eat a big meal at say nine o'clock at night and be very happy to do that. But I don't Well, I gotta get up I gotta get up at five thirty to go to work. Oh oh really? Oh okay. Well I have to be to work at seven. Mm-hmm. And how late so do I get you, up at, how say late, what? How late do you work till? Seven to uh like uh, noon. Oh, is that it? That's all? Right. Or or like nine to two thirty. Okay. That's not bad. No, five and a half hours, five hours. How many hours a week are you working? Uh, this week, 16 and a half. Yeah, uh, but uh, would you like it to be like 40 hours a week? No, no. no. So you were asking, no you basically were asking for a part-time job. Right, Yeah. 20 hours, 20 hours tops. Do you get any health insurance out of that? No. I will. Oh, you will? Good. Oh, yeah. Good, because... What happens is that that can be used as a, a supplemental. Right, to go with Medicare well, and, and Medicaid. Actually, Medicare may become your supplemental because you will be insured on a group insurance policy of a large company. And so Medicare becomes your secondary and your your me, your medical plan will become your first. Oh, is that right? Yeah, which is fine, which is fine. As long as the bills get paid and I don't have to pay them, I'm fine. Yep. Yeah, well, that's what I, I don't want to get a bill for twenty thousand dollars for my time at Mount Sinai. What? So I can get infected? Right. And how long were you there? I was there for fourteen hours. Oh my God! They did every test imaginable. Right. You told me. The only thing is, and, that, and you came out one hundred percent healthy. For the most part, I got some enlarged lymph nodes, and I got a couple of spots on my lungs, which are nodes, but they're only like one to two centimeters, and that's not considered anything serious. Right. You keep a check on them, make sure they don't grow, but they're common. They're very common. You probably have some. 
you know. Really? You think so? You could. Yeah, very easily. Did you smoke? I did, yeah. Yeah, so you probably have a couple, you know. It's it's not a big deal. Not a big No, deal. I'm not worried about it. No, they checked every inch of my body. I'm I'm In fact, they had a bus come by at uh at work and we went, went on the bus and they took a uh, blood and they uh told you your your, your uh uh, uh well, what's what's the word? Blood, I'm blood pressure. For? Right, your blood pressure, your cholesterol. Yeah, all of that. You know, all that. Your height, your weight. Good. Your your you know. Good. I'm five pounds overweight. I like the fact that they're, you know, they're taking care of you that way, and you're only part time. Right. But they don't right. want you dying in their store either. Hey, listen, we gotta go. We're done. We're done. We're finished here. We're history. Or as they say in France, l'histoire. Right. Am I right? Le fini. C'est fini? C'est fini. Yeah, it is finished. Right. Goodbye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Stephen Kravitz. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Everything seems to be going oh, kind of okay tonight. There are a few problems, but I won't get into that. I've got to reset the whole thing for what we go out live on with the live streams and stuff. i got to redo it because I have to do it by hand in order to get it going now. And it's always one thing or another. we got a lot of the uh, technical problems somewhat taken care of. So we'll have to wait and see what the uh, what happens with that. Let me see here. How uh, how uh, I just want to see how. Okay, and that's okay, and that's okay. I'm trying to get the sound better. I don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, we do have some people who are waiting out there to join the citizen panel. Actually, it's just two of them. Uh, but, you know, what the hell, it's better than nothing. Hold on a second, there they are, here they come. All right, and uh, th there they go. Uh, hello, hello. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Brian, oh, there we go, there's Brian Neary, hello, Brian. I gotta plug it in, I always forget. You always gotta plug what in? I, uh, my camera to the laptop, it's my laptop from work, so. Oh, I see, okay. We, you know, we can't see the computers you've got there, so we have no idea what the. What I got the my laptop is. there, and I got my yeah. other. Oops, yeah, my other, my bigger laptop there. Yeah. And my fruit. See how good I'm eating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Anyway, uh, we uh, we seem to be working a little better tonight than we were last night, so I'm not as depressed. However, you will see me glitch every now and then. That's a problem I haven't been able to fix yet. I don't think anybody saw you last night. You had no show last night, did you? What do you mean? Oh, today's Thursday. Oh. Never mind. Oh, boy. <laughs> I thought I'd seen you recently. What day do you think it is? Uh, Wednesday. Crystal Phil. Wednesday. Oh, I should, don't say it three times, please. Don't say his name three times so he's going to show up. Yeah. He, uh, he's actually uh, got the sniffles. He sent me a text and said... Um, I don't feel good. I'm going to bed early. My nose is runny all day long. I ate some ice cream, and that destroyed me. Uh, no show for me. Well, maybe he should take a COVID test. Maybe he should. Like COVID to me. Huh? Yep. yep. Well, tonight I'm feeling a little hot, heavy in the chest and sniffly. Anxiety? Could be. Could be. This happens to me. See, their glitch just went by. I don't and care. Wasn't I really show. don't care anymore. You know. Yeah, just do the show, enjoy yourself, little things like that, who cares? Well, enjoying myself doing the show has long passed, okay? So oh. <laughs> don't, you know, don't push it. Uh, anyway, how are you guys doing tonight? I'm good. You know. Got a big hole in my ceiling. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What happened with your? Here, here's the exciting stuff we do on this show, ladies and gentlemen. Tell them. Well, I've noticed water dripping from the ceiling over my bathtub last night, and I finally called maintenance, and he came by during the show <laughs> to see it. Yep. 
they climbed up in there today and found out that the drain pipe from the tub in the apartment upstairs. That's what I figured it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they had to open up the whole ceiling over the tub to get to that so they could cut out the part that was cracked and seal it. And now they got to leave it open for a week so that the seals can dry. <laughs> oh, boy. I could crawl up into the floor between apartments, the building floor. Yeah, and, uh, you have a whole n another room now. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any idea if it's a sexy looking woman up there or what? No, 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 not not up there, but on the other side. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah I, I don't know if I can get across to Oh, the look what I just found here. They just flew on my onto my screen. We seem to have quite a few of them in the apartment lately. Uh oh, bug? No, a ladybug. Ah. Now in you, the I, apartment? You can't yeah, you can't kill them because that would be bad luck. Yeah, and well, they're, they're hmm? innocuous, so you don't want to kill them. Oh, they're very innocuous. Yeah, yeah. it's just that he's covering up one of my uh, one of my things that I play, but it doesn't matter on the screen, you know. But no, Marjorie did that the other. Day. She said, "Don't do. You got to be very careful. Don't kill them. You know, don't swat them. Don't do anything because ladybugs are good luck." And yeah. so she tried to take the ladybug and put it on a piece of paper so she could fly it out the window yeah. and she smashed it. <laughs> we have we have all these little frogs here because we have a creek in the backyard. These little tiny frogs, so so like a couple months ago, they just they you know, rivet all night. It's really cool to go to sleep to. Yeah. But uh, where I was moving some stuff one night and I felt a squish. <laughs> and it was the frog, and Adrian came running around the corner. Where's the frog? Because I said, oh, there's a frog over here. I moved some stuff, and he jumped right at the wrong time. I think he got away, baby. <laughs> and I had to cover him up. <laughs> you had to cover him. He was, yeah, I, I stepped on him. So. Do you have any pets? He had a frog. He three kids. <laughs> he had a frog. He had a frog. No, we, we, we had a dog probably like four years ago. We had a dog for a little while to take care of from a friend. Mm -hmm. And it was a puppy, and I was glad to have that because the kids don't want a pet now. Adrian wants a dog, but the other kids don't want it because they didn't, they didn't walk it. They didn't do anything. Oh, it was too much work for them. Yeah. I yeah. see. Simon would like a cat, but then Stephanie's sort of allergic to cats, but she's handled one cat okay. But see, we, we have this sort of busy street here. Mm -hmm. Not busy like fast cars, but a lot of people walk here. And I always tell them, I say, see that, see that gentleman walking the dog or see that lady walking the dog? Yeah. You know whose dog that is? That's their kid's dog. Yeah. They're the ones that have to walk it. So I'm not walking the dog. So. Did that for years. Don't you have a schoolyard across from you? Yeah, but what yeah. Do, well, how about a cat? Yeah. How about a cat? Yeah, Stephanie says she's allergic, but she's handled a couple of cats recently. So, you know, I, I don't know about you guys. Anybody here watch you look at TikTok? Oh, yeah, there's. Yes, I think I know what you're going to say. What? The cat. And there's these cats with really big eyes. The Bengalis. Yes, and the, that's what Simon wants. Yeah. And now, what Marjorie, what, not Marjorie, what Susan, right? Let me get through all my wives, okay? When Ronnie, <laughs> Ronnie, <laughs> go to the list. What Ronnie uh, uh, had was a serval, which is kind of like one of those combination house cats, jungle cats. Oh yeah. And the yeah. Bengalis are that too. They oh. are. They are just gorgeous. But oh. the problem is, they are. They get sick very easily. Because they're, yeah. you know, they're they're really inbred, and uh, it's, uh, you know, but they aren't they adorable? And yeah. I got to tell you, the serval. At least I know this about the serval, and I imagine it's true of the Bengalis as well. Uh, Ronnie had one, and then my ex girlfriend Xanthi had one when I went to visit her in Cleveland. She's all my ex wives and girlfriends got servals, you know. Yeah. And so I went to visit my Xanthi years ago in uh, in uh, Cleveland, and she had uh, this serval. And uh, I woke up in the morning. I mean, this cat was huge. I mean, they're like this. I mean, I, yeah. my hand, you can't see it, oh. folks, but, you know, they're like that, okay? And they're, they're, uh, uh, they're really huge. 
And I woke up in the morning, and the cat was standing on my chest, <clears throat> looking down at me. And I felt like I was in a jungle encampment, mm. you know, and I was being visited upon by some kind of jungle cat because they're that big, you know. All right, uh, Phil, Phil, my mutual friend, uh, John Diagostino, he's a custom car builder. He's got a couple of those. That's not the one that Simon wants, but he has, he's got a couple of those. And yeah, they're, 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 uh, you know, the fur is beautiful and they're really big, like you say. And they take up, he in his backyard, he has a huge play area for them. Uh, so yeah, he spends a lot of money on those. Things. Well, Marjorie says if we get a cat, we have to get a rescue. And, I'll, you know, it's a very nice uh, feeling. You're going to get a rescue, and we're going to take a cat who otherwise would not have found a home. Uh, but uh, I, I, I said to her, I'd really like a Siamese. I don't need a rescue, you know. I really like breeds, you know. And um, uh, But she, want, she said she wanted to get a, a, a rescue. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. Wow. That, that's, oh, that's wow. is that the Bengali or is that the? Uh, I, I don't the know. Servant? I don't know. It's one of those. And I yeah. saw John. He was at a car show right when this one just came out of the hospital one time. Yeah. And yeah, he was a nervous wreck, like it was a human. But <laughs> no, but they get they get quite sick. They they are not uh, the healthiest of cats because they are so bred that it causes problems. You know. Now Simon's been looking at these little kitty, the little cats, and they have like really big eyes. You know, I think they're photoshopped a little bit, but yeah. So he's looking at those. Oh, well, they used to have those in Keen paintings. Mm -hmm. you remember Keen, mm -hmm. Walter Keen? Mm -hmm. By the way, M Margaret Keen, his wife, uh, died last week mm -hmm. at the age of a hundred and one. Wow! And she died with her eyes open, of course. Uh, <laughs> If you, know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, folks, for jokes, it's that uh, the Keens drew all those artworks, those paintings of kids with big eyes, mm -hmm. and uh, so made a fortune off of it. But anyway, so, um, uh, well, that's it. That's all I got to talk about. I had a black cat. I had an all black cat, and this was in the 90s, so his name was Hammer. <laughs> so. <laughs> MC, or MC Hammer, exactly. Hammer, uh, Hammer, good. yeah, Hammer. That was my my all black cat. So. Oh, that's good, Hammer. The cats are nice, man. They just cruise around, and I, you know, dogs are entertaining, but the cats just take care of themselves. So. You know, if Siamese cats mate with any other breed, with any other like house cat or whatever, they, they come out black. They always come out really? black. Wow. Yeah. I had several black cats that were the children of Siamese. You know, <laughs> but, uh, well, two Siamese cats were black, so I guess maybe that's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, uh, I, I love Siamese cats. I mean, they just make... Yeah, they were nice. Well, they're, they're the males, not the females. The females are very wild, okay? Not as friendly, but... The males are just, they're so loyal and they're so loving and they so care about you, you know. So, anyway. But I, I Marjorie keeps saying, oh, let's get a cat, let's get a cat. And I go, you know something, I don't want to buy anything that's going to stand there every morning when I wake up and look at me and go, <laughs> you know, long after you're gone, I'm still going to be around. You know, because I was always used to cats not living as long as me, you know. What kind of cat was uh, your friend's cat? The one that you used to take care of? Oh, that uh, that was uh, she was a rescue. Mm. Uh, she was, you know. I'll tell you. I actually think there's a breed. You know how there are yellow cats, and they kind of have white markings. Yeah. And you see them a lot, and that's what she is. <laughs> and and while it's, I guess she's a mutt. You know, I don't think so. I think that that's a kind of breed. And she was she was terrific. She was just she's a, she is terrific. She's still still going strong. And uh, what happened was, uh, the, the, uh, my friend Jack and his then uh, girlfriend, who became his wife, Natalia, 
I said, could you take care of our cat while we go to Europe? Because he was filming this documentary they were doing on him. And we said, sure, we'd be happy to. And this cat came here. And for the first couple of days, of course, you couldn't even find the cat. We thought we thought it had run out the front door. You know, The cat will always find places to hide if they don't want you to find them. And behind the laundry machine was a great place for her. But anyway, after a couple of days, she got used to being here. And by the end of it, she was completely spoiled because we've got a... Uh, 2,500 square foot apartment that if you start at one end and go to the other end uh, you're going about a oh I don't know a quarter of a block you know and the cat would just love at night I would tr be trying to go to sleep and it was like a horse galloping through the house <laughs> because, I remember those little claw marks. because oh, it became yeah. this like real runway for her and she just really and she got so used to this that when she went back to that small little apartment they had she was like pissed off <laughs> so but we got to love her i mean there was just something about her that was uh, so so <clears throat> wonderful uh and um uh, we have a lot of pictures of her here. We like, they, she's our cat, you know, we took pictures of her. Oh, guess who's here? The Trump voter. Oh my. Here he comes, he's gonna be here. Here he is, there he is. Show your whole face there, Tony. Move your camera a little bit so we can see your whole yeah. face. We wanna see what a traitorous human being. <laughs> this is what it looks like. Alex, I can't stand by it enough. No, no that, that, that doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I I, I'm not happy with Biden. I'm not happy with Biden. Brian's not happy with Biden. Alan's not happy with Brian. I think, Charlie, you're not that happy with Biden, are you? No, not unless he... Uh, yeah. Did you hear about this stupid right-winger, anti-choice um, judge he wanted to appoint, a federal judge to replace McConnell? I, was, I didn't hear the whole thing, Charlie. What was it? What was that about? Well, you obviously weren't talking about Tony. Well, who are you talking about now? I'm talking about Biden. Biden is, was going to, to placate Mitch McConnell, he was going to appoint to a lifetime federal judgeship this rabid anti-choice person that wants to put women in prison for having uh, abortions. He's going to appoint him to, 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 for some deal he was making with McConnell. Did you hear about the 10-year-old girl who was raped yeah. and is pregnant and they won't give her an abortion? She was pregnant by rape. She got raped. Yes. She got pregnant. And they're going to make her have this baby. They're going to rape her again. How cruel are can these she, people? Can't you leave the, can they leave the state, though? I was hearing... Well, yes, but, but well, let me give you another story. This one happened in Mississippi. Mississippi today was the last... was Yesterday was the last day you could get abortion at that Mississippi clinic that was the center of the whole... The you know, no, one that they had in the, in the state. Yeah, and the only one they had in the state. And a woman showed up today to get her abortion because she had an appointment and didn't know that they were closing down, and now she can't get her abortion. And they were saying what the problem is is they don't know about this woman, but the average woman in Mississippi can barely travel to where they are, mm -hmm. let alone to another state to get one. So I mean, it's just terrible what's happening, and 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 it's it's inhumane. It's just inhumane. No, no, I'm not happy with Biden right now. Yeah, I'm not happy with Biden. So none of us are, Tony. But you know, I ain't voting but, but, for Trump. But Trump is not the answer, Tony. Hmm. Bill rubbed off me, I think, a little bit. What? Bill rubbed off on me. His humor, I think, he got into my head a little bit. No, no. I talked to him today. He says you chickened out because. I didn't really say Okay, anything. I want you to give me three yeah. good reasons to vote for Trump. He was good on the economy. Wait a minute, three reasons, Tony. He's not a nice, I don't like January. Uh, uh, no, give me three reasons why well, I should vote for him. He's funny, you know, but you gotta admit you No, know. no, and if, I'm, is this a serious I mean, question? I'm asking you. you my mother's I want life's you... on the line who he killed already. What? Uh, <laughs> that's true. Remember, he killed my mother, really. 
I let him pass. I gave him a pass on that, too. On killing your mother? Oh, okay. Exactly, right? Oh, God. She's going to really haunt me now tonight. Three good things. I thought he was good on the economy. That's fine. He was. He was good on the, Was he good on the economy? I mean, job, I mean, it was It was going pretty good for three years. No, it wasn't. Before. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It had, nothing happened much with the economy. Okay, that's one. That's his one. But let me let me give it to him because he believes it. Okay. And there's two other things now. Uh, let's see. So he wants to be a dictator. He does. He's in love with Putin. We know that. Well, yeah. His wife's hot. You know, I don't know if I can give you three. I can give you one. Okay, well, that's not good okay, enough. Well, that's not good in enough. In this country, you've got to have three reasons to vote for somebody. Right, let me think again. Three? Well, uh, hold on. Let me try to think of two more. I feel like I'm on a test, time test here. You're, right. you're, you're sexually aroused by him? That could be one. No. Uh, I thought he was actually really fu- I missed his... Uh, no, the funny... It, uh, I didn't find him funny. I know, okay. but it was kind of... The there, was nothing, there was nothing funny about that man. Mm-hmm. Tony's favorite color is orange. I hate those three Supreme Court justices he appointed. I'm trying to think. Of two. I thought he was going to be a kind of guy. I can't give you, right now, I can't give you two more of the time. Okay. All right, I mean, I can't say he kept us out of war because that doesn't really mean anything. We're not really in a war. So. Well, he didn't keep us out of war, but he didn't He didn't do anything to. to oh, you know what I did you know. like? I did like a little bit of the tariffs on China a little bit. I do you think that was a step in the right direction? But you understand, we pay the tariff. We pay the China tariffs. China doesn't pay the tariff. The American people pay the tariff. economics. Didn't we, you know that? Didn't you know that? Uh, you didn't know that, Tony? But I still liked it anyway, though. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You <laughs> like the tariff, which we wound up having to pay out of our pockets. I mean, we always pay anyway. But I thought oh, it no, would have oh, been... Oh, 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 Tony... God. Tony, 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 please, please. Did you, uh, did you decide to go back to high school? And oh, and I got another one. And I got another one. I thought the oil was under two dollars a gallon, which was big. Which that now was old. during COVID. It was four dollars a gallon before COVID. To bring Reagan back is a dollar a gallon. There you go. Wait a minute. I, when, when, when in your lifetime was gas two dollars a gallon? I think it was a dollar eighty-seven at one point. No, with Trump. No, no. COVID, yeah. Was but it? you don't drive, so what difference does it make what it is? Well, it keeps the groceries down because you got to get the trucks, and it costs more money to bring it into the store. Yeah. Yeah, so but the gas, the, what, what control does Biden have over the gas? Well, he won't drill for anything either. Well, no, he, he can't. He's too old to drill. No. You realize the United States right. drills more oil than any other country in the world? I mean, How is Biden right. stopping us from drilling? Not and he also opened up a bunch of oil fields and the, and they won't drill it because it'll bring the price down. Yeah, they have thousands of acres of 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 of, uh, of, 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 of federal land that they could drill on. They won't. Drill. Tony, why don't you just admit you don't know shit about politics or economics or anything? Like that's how we're screwed. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And, and that you are representing on this program the stupid American voter. Even so, I gave you three. <laughs> Tony, are you watching TikTok again? <laughs> no, I actually. You know he what? gets all his news from TikTok. I have TikTok. Well, yeah, how do you go. get news what from about TikTok? Our friend? Where's our friend? I know this. <laughs> Brian, I thought he was obsessed with this. How do you? <laughs> how, who thought TikTok was actually new? Wait a minute, I got a question. How do you? How, what are you doing, Ray? <laughs> <laughs> the Zoom. I hate people who play with Zoom like that. I can't help it. It's you, I'll stop. Yeah. It's, uh, Ray's an actor. He can do that. I promise. Yeah. It's his desire to be on TV. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, My mother's going to haunt me now for what I said, I think. Good. He didn't like Trump, and now I'm gonna. She, she's probably going to come to my dreams today. I think See, what happened, happened here is Phil talked him into... The, the stupid game and he tried to get everybody to believe this and now when you pin him in the corner Alex he can't say because he Phil didn't prepare him for that well Phil didn't prepare him for anything <laughs> Phil didn't even prepare him to prepare Tony for Phil no you know. Phil prepared himself for Phil <laughs> <Yeah>. <coughs> excuse me 
But I mean, I, I don't know. I think, and I'm, I'm just so disappointed with the administration, I think, too. Yeah, but that doesn't make Trump good. You understand, Trump won't let you have another election. If you elect Trump in 2024, we'll never get the vote again. He'd steal the mailboxes, let's be honest. That was the setup. I mean, I don't even, you know, I don't know what to believe anymore, to tell you the truth. Oh, my God. That's, I know. It's just that's crazy. the trouble with a lot of voters in this country, and that's why. Well, they I'll tell you, Tony. Public. You know, you do have cho- you do have choices besides Trump. We like do. for instance, like funny. for instance, you could vote for Boris Johnson. <laughs> he's gone, I think. Right? He's looking bad, Alex. Uh, yeah. Well, he's no longer prime minister, is he? I thought he. Well, he's, he's still prime minister until they find somebody else. Oh, okay. So they put an ad uh, in Craigslist. Uh, <laughs> looking for a new prime minister. I'll take the job. Men or women are suggested. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, mm. your your Paxlovin is going to be uh, able to get a little bit easier now. It sounds like. What do you mean? Yep, they're going to allow pharmacists to prescribe. <clears throat> oh yeah. The FDA approved that today. Oh, so I can just go to my pharmacist and say, can I get some Paxlovid, please? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. If you test positive and you and they get the Can pharmacist. you use it more than once? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I could just call my doctor and he would. They did that. Yeah, yeah they did that in the uh, randomized studies. They had, like, people use it four times in four different months and it still, you know, I guess. Yeah. Worked out. You know, today I'm feeling, I've got sniffles and chest, a little coffee here. Yeah. I was tired this morning from my outlet, from, from the air conditioner dried me out last night. I had a lower. It's okay. Trump's fault. Yes, it's what Trump's Pax- fault. What is that? What? What is Paxlovid? Uh, it's a Jerry Lewis uh, drug. <laughs> Paxlovid! <laughs> Paxlovid! <laughs> you take it right after you take your morning riboflavin. <laughs> I liked your Abbott and Costello imitation yesterday. Oh, yeah. Half of it, Ray, is the morning after pill in case you get pregnant. <laughs> oh, shit. Plan B. <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> Gee, that makes... I can't do that. I can't do my, my uh, uh, Lou Costello anymore <laughs> seeing Dracula because uh, I, uh, mm-hmm. I, I uh, boom, start coughing. Well, because basically I have to get a good thing going up. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny when you would do that. Yeah, but anyway, um, 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 yeah, so uh, no, Paxlovid is, uh, is a drug which is perhaps the best drug for COVID. Better, almost better. I won't say better than a vaccination because I don't want everybody going out and then, you know, not getting vaccinated. But it, antiviral. If you don't, it, let's say you didn't take, yes. uh, uh, didn't get vaccinated, mm-hmm. and you come down with COVID, they give you this Paxlovid, and within one day, it starts killing the virus. Paxlovid. So, so like, does it does it have to be pretty quickly from when you were infected? Within five uh, days. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, cool. yeah. By the way, what's the current uh, count now? Because. Think they say things are going to get worse again? Yeah, there were over a thousand deaths today for the first time in months. I know all you people tune into this program to get happy news. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it was 1,241 uh, 1, deaths today. And 12, we're up to 88, I'm sorry, 1 million, 20,000. But wait a minute, how many, wait a minute, how many died today? 1,241. That's pretty low if you think about it from what it was. Yeah, we had 5,000 in January 2021. Yeah, one day. Yeah. Uh, How would this compare to a normal flu? Oh, still way more. Oh, Oh, very. That's a lot more than the flu. Normal flu maybe kills 20, 25,000 people in the United States a year. A year. Yeah. Yeah. A whole year. Yeah. Still really high. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, well, you know, if if I yeah, I I'm I just hope I don't come down with it again. I'm staying indoors. I'm not going out. You know, yeah. I don't want anything to do with that. I think you're fine outside. 
outside that they've proven it doesn't transmit very well unless you're in a large crowd so going yeah but walk. you know the thing is there's so many idiotic people out there now yeah. what's what's happened is ever since they said well don't <clears throat> wear the masks anymore you know you yep. everybody's getting loosey-goosey about this you know they're it, going to festivals and tongue kissing hmm. each other yep. you know yeah yeah you know, and and I'm sorry, I don't think you. You've got monkeypox too when they. I don't think you can go to a music festival and not get it. Okay. I did. I I went to the Santana concert. It was totally packed. I didn't get it. Really? That's because he almost dropped dead on stage. No, that was last. It was this week. Oh, Are you vaccinated? I yeah. I'm, I have. I'm double boosted. And you're double boosted. So and maybe, it was outdoor. How do you know you outdoor. didn't get it? Well, I didn't. I didn't have any symptoms. It's true. I could have gotten it, right? Yeah, you know. I actually might have had it uh, when, when it first started. My wife had it. She was super sick. I had no symptoms, and nobody really knew how it was passed. And I, I probably had it, but I probably. Well, just, you know, yeah. I'll tell you what Brian's going through is what I went through with Marjorie. Was uh, I didn't have it. She was coughing and hacking and everything. And then we took the test, and I didn't have it when we took the test on a Sunday. <clears throat> But she did. So the next day, I called the doctor, and before I did, I checked, and all of a sudden, I had it. Okay, so I followed her into the into the uh, valley of death, and uh, so he then ordered up this Paxlovid for both of us. But the thing was that uh, uh, you know she she was. Uh, she was coughing a lot. I remember what happened was one night I'm lying there and she's coughing all night, and I'm going, "Gotta be, yeah." But you <laughs> that, know, that was... it, it wasn't a bad case that she had. But we wanted to get the Paxlovid to kind of nip it in the bud, and I took it before it really affected me. Although Absolutely. I started feeling a little tired, and you know, all of that. You know. Yeah, so Tiffany okay. started. I was. I was in oh. Lodi for a couple nights, and then uh, when I came back, she was coughing really bad. She was complaining mm -hmm. about a really, really bad sore throat, so I stayed away from that. Well, day. here's the thing. Here's what's so terrible about it. So, okay, I'm married to this woman, and now I have to wear a mask around her, okay, and I can't watch TV with her. I can't sleep with her at night. You know, you can now. It has so many benefits. I'm yeah. telling you. <laughs> <laughs> my friend, my friend came. My friend who's my contractor. He came over. He came over uh, yesterday. He was telling us about where. Start telling us our situation. He was telling us of his, and he said, "This is like a vacation for me." He goes, "I'm away from the wife. I'm away from the kids." I said, "He goes, I love having this. Just a little touch of it. Just a little sore throat, and I'm good." <laughs> yeah. Oh. So there's some interesting news uh, about COVID. They're finding that they don't know who exactly yet, but, but they're testing people. Some people have a natural immunity to it. Yeah. They don't know how many, and they don't. And these are people that have not been vaccinated. This is true oh. of most diseases. You know something? Uh, I think the more they figure, the more they look into it, the less they really know about this really? disease. I yeah, just think that it is, it, it, what happened, you remember the days when we were spraying down our packages from UPS oh, and yeah. letting them sit in the driveway for the for three or four days before we brought them in? Yes. You, you know what, when, when you don't have a guest, you need to replay that, that little thing you guys did. <laughs> what? You guys took a video, remember you have a video of that, right? Well, yeah. some of the our stuff. The whole video. Yeah. yeah, you should replay that. See, you know, when we were he had the package we stacked up in the foyer, and <laughs> yeah. really, I don't even remember. Do I? Did I do that? Did I do it? Yeah, all that? Well, yeah. You go... guys looked like you were like gonna go rob a yeah. bank. Remember? Yeah, you had like <laughs> hazmat suits on and stuff. Well, I have sniffles tonight. We I gotta find that, Charlie. It's somewhere. Yeah. I think it might be allergies, though, because it doesn't feel like a cold. You know. Well, it says here sixty percent. Are of COVID transmissions are from asymptomatic people. Oh, ah. yeah, if they don't know they have it, they go around acting normal, sure. Yeah. And that's how I feel. I, I, I think I should have it, but I haven't. Well, I, I, actually, I have tests. I have the test tomorrow morning to go to Lodi. But 
Oh no, here we go again. There's a half hour 97 show. 4. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah, remember that? You yeah, used to wear those batteries every night. Every, night. every need five the minutes. Paxlovid. <laughs> oh my god, those are the days. So you say the more they know, the less they know. The more they know about it, the less they well, know. Well, no, no it's yeah. just it's just that Okay, I want to know these tests we take. Okay, now I know that they have a certain... Accuracy. Accuracy. And okay. sensitivity, yes. And sensitivity, yeah. But the question is, if you are positive for COVID, does that mean you have COVID? I mean, it, it, it just, it, it, none of it makes much sense, okay? Like today, I've got COVID, and the next day, I don't have COVID when I take the test. Yeah. You know? And I you mean... Know. You know, it's funny is, is so when she was feeling symptoms, mm -hmm. she took an antigen test and you could barely see the line there. Mm -hmm. And she says, well, I don't know if I have it. I said, no, you have it. If there's any trace of that line, means you have that in your system. All right, well, I and took... the next day she tested and it was strong. And then she didn't test. She had a PCR test and now she tested uh, today. And it was really, really faint again. I said, okay, that seems like it's getting well, No, but here's what happened. Marjorie took the test. And it was faint. My line was faint, but then the faintness went away for some reason. I guess it, it you know. But she was fa faint. Uh, and uh, she, uh, uh, so I said, well, let's take the test again, just to make sure, because it's faint, and maybe if we take it again, it'll be solid, and we have to see if you still got it or not. And we took it again, and there was no line there. Have you bothered to read the directions? The directions say any line says that you, it, no matter how dark it is, says you're positive to, for it. Yes. And so the line doesn't get darker because you have a full-blown case or not. Okay, but wait a minute. Then, about an hour later, I gave her the same test, and it, the line wasn't there. So which one do we believe? Yeah, well, that's it. That's uh, two out of three. You go get Brian's test, which is a lot more accurate. Yeah, yeah, the an antigen. Yeah, yeah, but I don't want to go and do that and, and, and have to go somewhere to do it and then get the results three days later. And what good are results three days later if you've got it? You know? I think one thing, one thing you make a good point is I think there's so much data out there now and there are so many individual type cases and then there's so much fake news with all that stuff mixed all around, it's sometimes it's hard. That's why I don't listen to CDC anymore. I take care of myself and my family, right. and right. that's how I go about Do it. Do I notice a certain creature in back of you there? No. Yeah. Huh? Do I notice that? This is it's like playing. Not a lady you know bug. what we do here? We it's kind of our own version here, folks, on Gabnet of oh. of where's Waldo? <laughs> you know. Oh, there's Waldo. I see Waldo. So. So somebody that thinks that the more we know about something like this, the less we know about it, I guess is the way you kind of what, what, what I'm trying to I, say I wanna, is, I change is that, so, that look look at all the m misassumptions we had in the very beginning. Like me absolutely. spraying all the, and wearing gloves everywhere I went and so on. We know now that we maybe didn't have to do that. That's right. Which is fine. Right? That's We're what happens in know. science. Oh. Yeah, and, in science, and there's a lot of trial and error. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember so. the news. The news they had this this sheet on the on the the TV, and it said, uh, you know, plastic was this much, cardboard was this percentage, or how long it yeah. stays. The disease, yes. the, the, yes. the yeah. virus will stand. Yeah. Stainless steel was like one day or something. That's why everybody's wiping stuff down. People now they still have the clean pens and all that stuff. Oh, let me get a clean pen. I said, I'm not worried about. It. Getting COVID yeah. from a pen, unless you cough in it and I have my hand on it and I suck it up. Oh, listen, when we went to vote, to, still to this day, they gave us an, they said, pick up the pen to use it to mark your ballot. And so then, when, oh, in, by the way, you get to keep the pen. In science, <laughs> there you go. In science, think about, think about cardiology for a minute. In the 50s, if people had high blood pressure, there wasn't much they could do about it. They didn't. They could do a, a bypass surgery mm -hmm. if their arteries were clogged. If mm -hmm. they thought they were clogged, they didn't have a real good way of imaging that. Then came along blood pressure medicines, and that that was a game changer. 
So these are these are progressed, and then came along ways to image your blood vessels, like like a, a CT scanners and stuff like that. And then came along, uh, uh, you know, angioplasty and angiogram. Hey, hold so, on a second. I'm you know, I'm waving at Waldo. I know you're not waving mm -hmm. at me. It's okay. At Waldo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We see you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, where's yeah. Adrian? What she what she whispering in your ear all the time? <laughs> Mad thing. She's hiding. Huh? Do you have a blonde streak? Well, yeah, she's got oh, a blonde she's streak. Mad at me because every night I say I'll let you know when the show's almost over and you can say good night and I forget. <laughs> so. uh, okay, come yeah. on, come on, come on. I'll, I'll, I'll Hello. Okay. Hey well, kid, beat it. Okay. Just pretend like she's not there. Beat it. <laughs> <laughs> How could we pretend? We mm. <laughs> oh, Brian's got antennas. You know something? That's better than when you're watching the news and somebody's doing one of their reports from home and their cat walks by this by the, uh, <laughs> the yeah. camera. I would rather a kid did that. You know, I would like to see one of those those wokes on uh, uh, mokes mooks on uh, MSNBC while they're saying, "Well, and." Uh, Trump did this and Trump did that, and the kid goes, you know. Close the door with you out there. Yeah, really? That would be great. <laughs> it's no, we'll it's like being trapped in a room with a lion. You know? Mm. Here, she's picking mm. her up. You know, that's not going to be, that's going to get more difficult as the years yeah. go on there. We have to super glue the wall. What? I'm gonna have to super glue the wall. Right, right. So anyway, um, hi Adrian. But anyway, you, you know, I mean, this whole abortion thing is just—it's just so cruel. It's just well, so cruel. Well, Europe, Europe just announced in the news earlier tonight that they're going to start shipping the morning after pill to people that order it, and they're going to call it something else, so it doesn't. So you, you know, because some of these states. Are going to look at pregnant women, and they're gonna they're gonna look at their email, look at where they're going on the internet, and 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 well, have there are access. there are two different pills, you know. Really? There's the morning I, after I, I pill, which you okay. take the morning after to make sure you don't get pregnant. Okay, mm -hmm. that could be considered a form of contraception because you don't really know whether you're pregnant or not or whatever. Right. You're just taking it as a precaution. And the other one is an abortion pill. Right. Which you but can take up to like, what huh? The UK is going to start sending the abortion here pill, yeah, under a different name. But yeah. apparently, these states are going so nuts. It's going to be they're called. They're going to try and follow people on the internet where they go to see if they're ordering these pills. <laughs> Jesus Christ! It, it, this is this is not. This is because of Trump. Tony. I'm telling you, Tony. If okay. I uh, if I was, uh, I'd say 20 years younger. I'd be leaving this country right now. Would you, you know, pray you never get pregnant, Tony? What is Draconian. Canada? <laughs> yeah. What? Canada? What? What Canada? No, if you had to go, Canada wouldn't be a bad move. What? Don't I don't you? want to live in Canada. Have you ever? This, they're boring. Once, <laughs> Everybody's too nice up there. Yes. You know, no way. Have, have no you way. ever been to Canada? Huh? One time. You've been to really? Canada, yeah. yeah. But it was like it was uh, Jeff. It was like I was probably like twelve. We went. We drove through to Niagara Falls. We drove up. I mean, the worst the, the worst and week I ever spent. The, the worst snow. week I ever spent anywhere was one night in Montreal. Really? Uh oh, Toronto was wonderful. That's yeah, cool. really. What's wrong with What's wrong with Canada? It couldn't be as bad as Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on Miami, okay? Uh oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. So how's everything out there with you, uh, um, uh, uh, Gray? Oh, fine, fine, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Everything yeah. good out there with your friends and neighbors and everybody? Uh, yeah. <laughs> nothing, nothing much new going on, you know. Mm. Here in the suburbs. Yeah. Wh yeah. Which burbs are you in? Where are you? Palo Alto. Palo Alto. Okay. Yeah, near Stanford. Yeah, and you're in yeah. one of those. He's in one of those Eichler homes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Which are now worth three million dollars. At least. 
almost four, I think. Really? Wow. How much really? did you pay yeah. for it? Um, uh, I think four hundred and fifty thousand. Wow! So if you got rid of that house now, you could get rid of it for three million. Yeah. Four. Four million. What has made them? Is it because of their history? It's well. It's no. It's not the house. It's the land, well, and it's the school <laughs> district, and it's the fact that there is not a lot of housing in the city of Palo Alto. So people want to live in Palo Alto for the school district, mm -hmm. which is one of the best in the country. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of uh, a lot of Asian and Indian people who have who move here and are programmers, and they get paid tons of money at Google and Facebook. That's happening in Fremont too. Oh, that's why the price. That's why the, the the prices are going up. Yeah, and the school district is the best, like, gun high school. Well, they say like the same thing's true. Twenty in the United States. They, they say the same is like true in four. San Francisco. San Francisco's gotten prohibitively expensive. Yeah, because yeah. because but for other Palo Alto and San Francisco. Well, Atherton is the most. Well, here's expensive. what happened. Here's what happened. All those companies Valley. went into Silicon Valley. Okay, with them they brought all their people, and they became big companies, and so on. They the apples and the what have yous, and uh, uh, and then uh, everybody decided that uh, they wanted to move to San Francisco, and still work at the uh, old Hewlett Packard. So Hewlett Packard right. and all those companies, uh, uh, Twitter being a good example of one of them moved their offices to San Francisco, you know. And they also, some of them, who still kept their offices down in San Jose and places like that, told their employees, well, we'll bus you down there. So with yep. all the people moving into San Francisco, because they didn't want to live in Palo Alto, okay, ta-da, prices yep. are just going crazy. Just so going before, crazy. COVID, before COVID, like, from Google and Facebook, buses every two minutes for hours in the fast lane up 101, mm -hmm. full of people. But a lot of people are still working from home, so that, that hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's yeah. slowly going back. Where yeah, but you know, Fremont's got some really good high schools and stuff, and so Indians and Asians are taking over the city. Yeah, but, but nothing like the peninsula. I, I grew up in Redwood City, which is right in the middle there. And when we were, when we were looking for this house, yeah, I we're trying to go up in the peninsula somewhere because we're up in Sunnyvale, our company, and it, there was nothing. When we put out the prices we're looking at, there was just nothing available. And, and then you go into Sunnyvale and some of these other, especially like Palo Alto, and these are like you know two bedroom, one bath houses that are that were back then were still going for two million. You know, they're just crazy. Nice. Well, the, I just looked at it. the prices have gone down a lot in the last month. Wow. Yes. yes. Everything's starting to level out. Car, cars are doing the same right now. All the, the high performance cars are starting to come down. Yeah, so my house went down a quarter of a million dollars in the last 30 days. Wow. Really? <laughs> sell, sell, sell. Hey, 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 Tony, that's Biden's fault. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. Damn Biden. Son of a bitch is killing me. <laughs> well, I have, a, I have a house in Santa Clara that I used to live in that I kept. Oh. And uh, it was the it, price stayed kind of stagnant for years. And then uh, Apple built a, a building across the street and Kaiser mm -hmm. and HP. And it went from and now it's a it's a one point two million. And I paid one hundred and fifty eight thousand. Yeah, that, that whole area where the UFO is, it's like crazy. Cupertino and all that area. Yeah. Yeah, it, that. <laughs> They're starting to close a lot of stuff down. You know, Great America's closing. We talked about that a couple of like, last week or something. But, you know, all, all these things that have a lot of land that were have been here for a while, all those are getting sold, and they're going to be all these high density apartments like crazy. They're building them like crazy in Fremont near the new Bart Station, the Warm oh, Springs Bart. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's there crazy. Milpitas. Yeah. What, what oh, are you yeah. saying, Tony? Is there empty land there? Lots that you can buy? Like not you, much. You have to go way far south, like towards Gilroy or out yes. past Livermore. Is zoning yep. like by you, Ray? If they knock your I'll house. I tell you, like, Tony. Just to be honest with you, you know, you're blaming a lot of things on Biden that Biden really didn't create as a problem. I, you, know, uh, you know, the cost of what's going on at the grocery store is partially uh, that 
we've had a problem with with gas. Okay, which by the way, the price in gas is down 16 cents. It's in down in the Bay Area too a little bit. Yeah. Oh, and you can thank Biden for that. Okay. All right. Um, but it 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 you know it, it it's hard to say what uh, uh, you know where these problems are coming from and, and what's causing them. But for the most part, you can't blame Biden. They're external. That you can, what you can blame on Biden is that he seems to have the inability to try and stem the tide of these problems. And maybe I think, that, like I said, he's not proactive with anything. It seems like I don't have any faith in him. That's maybe what it is. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you said, you but, but that doesn't make somebody want to turn to Trump. Now, it, now let me ask yeah. you this: Turn to somebody would, else. Would you would you vote for a Democrat for the Senate? I'll tell you the truth right now. I like if you told me anybody in Biden's administrator administration right now for presidency, I couldn't do it. Right? No, wait, now. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not asking you that question. Oh, now you're talking about for what though? Like, oh, somebody's vote? running for the uh, Democrats, running for the Senate. Would you vote for a Democrat for the Senate? It would have to depend on uh, what they stood for and what their policies were. So you know, I don't. I couldn't. Well, that's the reason we vote for don't vote for somebody in the first place, you right. moron. If I would vote, not him though. If if I like what they stood for, then I would do it. Then. So if somebody w doesn't complain about your text after text after text all day long, you'd vote for him. <laughs> How many texts do you get from him, Alan? I don't bad today, Alan. I don't get many. Not bad today. I counted ninety-two today. No, yeah. it wasn't. He hasn't yes. called me in a while, so I was sort of worried. Lucky you. Uh, don't hey hey don't don't even mention it, okay? Ex, ex me on the he didn't text yeah. me a okay. Yeah. Tony yeah. doesn't text me anymore. Well, the trouble <laughs> with Tony to is too. it isn't that Tony texts a lot. It's oh. just he texts one word at a time. He I know, I know. He can't he can't get a complete paragraph out. It's got to be three <laughs> words and then a hit text and three words. Yeah. It's a thing, it just no, I anything. know, I know where he, I know where he lives, and if he ever starts texting me again, you can come over and I'll make you I'll, lunch. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. <laughs> I won't my, wait for lunch. You'll be dead before you finish. I'm open the door. And you see him? Oh my God! Wait, you get the gun. Don't worry about it. Phil gave it to me. Oh yeah. my God! What, what's it? Uh, what, what are you showing? We can't see it. Are those, are those Tony texts? No, those are he. He leaves me messages like one minute long. So that's nice. Him. It's better than the oh, little quick. Oh, is this? Oh, I is, Alex, I left Phil a message from the dentist office. I was oh, in the chair. God, will you stop doing you know this why? to these people? You know why? <laughs> I overheard the lady that my dentist hates Biden. She hates him, and I was listening to the whole conversation. You know who she hates more than Biden? Probably you. I mean, she killed my gun. She killed me like crazy. I was. In that's see, that's because she hates you. I try not to talk politics. I heard, I overheard the whole conversation in the other room where they numb me up. She went to the other room to work on the patient. She and they were talking politics. I said, oh, shoot, she hates Biden too. I felt, I felt kind of. Nobody's amazing. happy with Biden, okay? But, My but, but he, if you want Trump, you're asking for trouble because if mm -hmm. Trump becomes president again, he's going to be president for life. You he won't be able going, to go back. You won't be able to go vote He'll have next a dictatorship. Time. When he dies, his kids will become president. Because he tried to get a dictatorship in here and by not wanting to leave office. Am I right, Charlie? Yep. yep. Tony, did you watch any of the January 6th investigation? I actually did. Tomorrow should be interesting. I think one of the attorneys is coming on tomorrow. No, that's, it's, oh. it's not public. You know, Brian, I mean, he doesn't understand it. That's the problem. I don't like January 6th. I mean, he, that was an embarrassment what he did. I even told him. That. Well, it's more uh, than an embarrassment. Embarrassment? It, it, it was treasonous. Well, it, how do you feel about the fact that Trump, the guy you seem to want to vote for, incited it? I mean, he did incite it. I mean, I remember watching. Oh, he did incite it. But that's just, that's you got to give everybody a little bit of. Tony, oh, what has uh, happened? Watching the movie, I was like, what's going on here? I tell you, you damn crazy. I still can't get over it. He really shouldn't run again. Let's be honest. I give you that. And Biden shouldn't run again. I, oh, I mean, I really do. I think he's too old to run, and I'm saying that as an old guy. Okay, he's too old to run again, and I think that uh, you know he's going to be doing the Democratic Party a great disservice by running. I, I agree. 
Yep. They say that if Gavin Newsom, for instance, runs, that he's got a good chance of beating even Trump, I think. You know? Didn't Obama, even early on, imply to Biden sort of publicly that he should only get run for one term? Well, I think, I, yeah, I, I think he'd be doing a great disservice to, to the Democrats. Don't you, anybody disagree with me? No. Great disservice no. by rerunning, you know. I, I'm and really already, glad that he did, and I'm glad that he got that orange-haired orangutan asshole out of there. Well, but, uh, we got him out of there. Now let's get somebody in there. I mean, I would love another Obama, somebody like Obama. Yeah, Obama, so Obama did a great job, you know. And he was a great cheerleader, and I think maybe that's Obama's what this wife needs. will run. She doesn't want. She to doesn't want it. She never Too wanted bad. him she's to be really president. Smart. What? <clears throat> Too bad. She's really smart. She'd she win. She's Obama. very smart. She'd win in a heartbeat. Yeah. She'd win in a heartbeat. Yeah. America loves her. You yeah. know. Uh, Oprah. And, Oprah. Oprah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, those, you know. Uh, I hear Oprah is worth $3 billion. Yeah. Maybe. She just keeps, she just sits there and keeps generating <clears throat> money. I don't understand it. When you make money when you're sleeping, that's making money. And when you're sleeping with other people, you make even more money. And when you're sleeping with Stedman, uh, well, you're wasting your time there. But no, actually, I met Stedman. Stedman did my show in San Francisco, oh. and oh, I, really, right. I really liked Stedman. He's a great guy. Great guy. Is he a comic? No. Oh no. What? He's a businessman. That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. And they've been together forever. I mean, I don't know. I think she, he's her beard. You know. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, and uh, hmm? when, uh, James Conn passed away today, right? And James oh, Conn. shit. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Damn it. Did you ever meet him, Alex? No. 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 I love that guy. Yeah. Yeah. But, oh, man, yeah, well, I mean, he was, he was 82. I'd like to say he, well, that's he a lived a long know, life, right? but I'm 82, so I don't want to <laughs> think in those terms. <laughs> yeah. Um, I hear the prime minister, former prime minister of Japan, got shot in the head tonight or today or something. What? And I'll find it again. Former prime minister, Japanese prime minister, Shizino Abe, was reported. Uh, Abe, probably. Yeah, reportedly, I guess he was campaigning. Is he um, dead? Nah, it doesn't say that. It says uh, he was shot while giving a campaign speech in western Japan. Uh, Abe was bleeding when, and when he collapsed. Abe's heart stopped. Abe. Stopped <laughs> it's Abby. Good old Abe. Oh, <laughs> Abby. Abby. Yeah. <laughs> it's Abby. Um, I, I, two shots in the head. He's not going to do very well. No, I don't think so. Either that or it'll be kind of another Trump. I was just going to say, you know, two shots in the head, he could run for Trump's uh, running mate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and even with two bullets, even with a bullet in his head, he's got more common sense than Tony. <laughs> Tony! <laughs> huh? I miss him a little bit, though. I don't know why. You... I well, miss... Entertainment. Yeah, well, go, you know. Uh, I, go watch go, some comedy go, go, elsewhere. Go get Netflix if you want entertainment, okay? Watch Ozark. I should watch Ozark. Oh, that's good. oh, okay. Go watch it. Oh, yeah, Have a pot of coffee good, first, good. Tony. Anyway. Hey, it's yeah. been uh, been good having you here, all here. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting a headache now. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I'll see you again uh, tomorrow. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Charlie. And uh, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Adrian. And thank you, uh, uh, Adrian! Alan. And thank you, Jeff. And thank you, Tony. And t thank you, Ray. Yeah, when you finally want her to say goodbye to everybody, where is she? You know? I know. It's yeah. okay. Anyway. I'm have have I been glitching too much tonight? No. No, it's okay. Okay. No, it's great. Nervous tick. Anyway. Fine. Hey, uh, thanks, everybody. Give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel. Yes, okay. Uh, and and it's it, 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 good, you know. Nice show tonight. 
Anyway, uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection on GabNet. He'll be taking your calls at GabNet Live on Skype. In the meantime, I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody. Night, everybody.